Hello, this is an adaptation of the Cartwright tutorial. Since the original lesson had no audio, but is going to assist those of us that like to, hear the lesson at hand as well as read the notes. But we'll use a goal pointer and the actual tutorial will use a white arrow. All movement, other than the goal pointer, is done by the original lesson. This lesson is about using the cutout tool. Hello, this is Bud. This card right tutorial is about using the cutout or cut path tool. The tool is used to cut entirely through a workpiece following any closed 2D sketch geometry. The machine uses a 1 8 inch straight cutting bit for this operation, so the maximum depth cut allowed is 1 inch. One very important design consideration when doing cutouts, and any other operation for that matter, is that you set up the design so that the material is always under the upper rollers when cutting. This will ensure the best possible accuracy of the cut quality. A quick check of your design will tell you if the regions being cut are at least three and a half inches from the right and left sides of the board. If cut paths come closer than three and a half inches to the edge, then you will need to use the keep under rollers function on the machine or use a jig. For information on the keep under rollers option, see the owner's manual. The cut path tool is found in the main menu's toolbar icon with a little saw and under the tool heading in the main menu bar. This option is grayed out unless a suitable object is selected and highlighted. Again, suitable objects are any closed 2D sketched geometry placed on the workpiece, such as circles, ovals, rectangles and squares, connected lines, um, we will start by placing a sketch figure on the workpiece and centering it. Place the circle by clicking and holding the left mouse button to establish its center point on the workpiece. While still holding the mouse button, drag to the established diameter that you wish. So they're going to go up and they're going to click. They're going to choose the circle. They're going to come down to the workpiece, get approximately where they want it, and drag it. Now center using the right, right mouse button. So they're going to click inside that. Go to center. And they want it dead center in the board, so they're going to center both. Notice that selecting somewhere outside the circle will remove the highlight and the circle will change to a dashed line. Notice that the cut path tool is now not active. Clicking back on the circle will highlight it again. I believe this is a cut path here. Yep. Next we will select cut path tool. Cut path dialog box is now open and acts and the actual one eighth inch wide cut can be seen on the inside of the sketch path. Note, since this operation produces a full depth cut, the software will generate very small tabs connecting the piece being cut to the larger piece. This ensures that the inner piece will not fall away from the main piece, which would cause the bit to bind and therefore damage the piece or the machine. Uh, these little tabs can be broken away upon completion or cut with a razor blade. You can flip the bit path to either side of the sketch path by clicking the flip cut button. 
Right now it's going to cut on the inside of the circle, so I would say that uh, the aim is that we wanted a specific size hole in this larger board. If we put it on the outside, then I would say what we were after is the inside piece to be a specific diameter. We can actually do some inlay with this thing if we played with it. Rip cut. The cut is now on the outside. You can also choose the hide cutout option to see the representation of the part without the surrounding material. Whichever side of the line the cut falls on will disappear. In this case, what we're after is we want this perfect circle and all the trim will disappear. And they hide the cutout and there's what you have. Rotate the workpiece to view a representation of the finished piece. And that appears to complete this lesson.